Hello and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales Ops Demystified podcast. Now, today we're joined by Rachel Krug, who has a wealth of experience uh, in product and commercial roles, currently the VP of Growth Operations at business.com. Rachel, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. It's, it's our pleasure entirely. Now, my first question that I have to ask is, how do you define growth operations? I think we define it really cross-functional here. So we think of it as sales operations, commercial marketing. I actually have new business sales also reporting to me. So it's a really cross-functional sales marketing and customer success role. And the reason we did it that way and call it growth is because I strategically think about the growth levers of acquisition, retention, referral, expansion revenue in all of the activities that we do. I put together our team uh, KPIs and goals every quarter. I track those. So it really made sense to integrate that as a growth function. Makes total sense. Is there a separate marketing team? So business.com is a two-sided market. So there is a separate team that works to get small businesses to our our website. We have folks focused on SEO, uh, paid traffic partnerships. Uh, Business.com is a marketplace with over 2 million small businesses on our sites or on our partner sites every month. Um, So there is a separate side of the business completely focused on that small business audience. But the marketers who are focused on the companies that are trying to reach small businesses, um, those are on my team. So it is a commercial marketing team. I actually think that I wrote an article on business.com like five years ago. You you guys take guest Um, contributors, right? We do. We have a community. Uh, Anybody can join the community and we do take contributed content. I personally have also contributed to the site. I tend to write you know, in my free time about if there's a particular problem that I'm solving or challenge that I'm facing, sometimes it just comes out as words on paper. And then I turned that into a handful of Mm. business.com articles over the past couple of years. So we will find them and we'll link below. Now, I do want to dig into the business.com story because I think that's going to be an interesting uh, use case for the audience. But pre that, I would like to talk about your other experience. So I see if Constant Contact in one of the places, you were product. Is yes. that accurate? That's correct. I was a product manager at Constant Contact for what we called the data platform. So uh, Constant Contact was acquired by Endurance International Group in 2016. And with that, we're really seeking to reimagine how people process data and technology all worked together. So there were product managers that owned each of those buckets. And, and I owned the data piece of that. So the problem, which was a a big problem that had board level visibility that I was solving in that role was how do I integrate data from over 200 entities into what we were calling the data platform. And then why make the shift away from the product world and into the commercial world? And then how how is that product experience uh, aiding you now in the current role? Yeah, I think I think at Constant Contact also I had the opportunity to work on Constant Contact's tool for Facebook advertising and take that product from 110 to 5,000 customers in three months. And I, I call that a really pivotal experience for me because from then on, I was very committed to growth and using data to inform growth. So I think the the product role or the commercial roles um, almost, you know, blend together a little bit for me, as long as they're focused on growing a company. And again, those growth levers I mentioned at the beginning, acquisition, retention, uh, referral, and expansion. Um, I also had the opportunity to move from Constant Contact to Right Networks with my manager from Constant Contact. Uh, And that was uh, my opportunity to build out a team. When I had gotten to Right Networks, there was two or three marketers. Um, I grew that team to 13 people and managed a seven-figure marketing budget in that role. So it was just a great personal opportunity as well to make the transition. 
Makes sense. So going back to the this relationship between sales and product, you you say these are blending together for you. In most businesses, these are completely separate teams. So if if you if you were talking to a sales ops person who works at a company, they have a product team of 10 people, a sales team of 10 people that they're responsible for. How would you see that person try and bring these two together? What's the strategy there? So I'm, I'm very close at business.com with our chief product officer and our director of product management. Uh, I am a stakeholder in a lot of both the platform and backend activities that we do and the site, the website activities that we do. Um, both, of course, trying to optimize and grow our business. Uh, but I think they, they really value having a, a business partner who understands how the product process works. So a lot of times, and I, just, I was actually just chatting with the chief product officer about this a couple of hours ago, I will, I will present a problem that I'm having. I'll, I'll present a commercial problem that I'll having, having to the product team. And then I am really fortunate that I have a team that I trust to help me figure out the solutions to that problem. And you know, I trust that they have a process. I understand the process uh, to help solve it. And um, I don't know, I think it's just great when you have that kind of multifunctional understanding. Uh, I am involved in a lot of cross-functional efforts in my current role. It's something I enjoy and I think that's something my company values as well. So would you recommend that this sales ops person that's, li- that's listening should go and spend six months in the product team? <laughs> I, I don't know that that's uh, feasible for everybody, but what I do think is feasible is getting involved in cross-functional projects. So I think there's a lot of opportunity and I think you know, we're always looking for project managers of cross-functional projects so that everybody stays on the same page and has the executive team has visibility into what's going on. So I wouldn't suggest, you know, taking time away from from your role, but I would suggest getting involved cross-functionally, maybe raising your hand to be a project manager of a cross-functional initiative and getting to know what other people at the company do. Got it. Makes sense. Now, when you joined, let's talk about business.com. When you joined, was the growth function there or did you build that when you joined? I built it when I joined. So they were like, Rachel, come in and build a growth ops team. That's, that's how it happened. Not exactly. So I actually had been close with a former executive at business.com. I had known for three years uh, for about three years, she was recruiting me to come to the company. And finally, it was the right time. But the position actually posted as sales operations. And so Whoa. I said, <laughs> I said, Aaron, you know, finally the right time. Not quite the right role, but I think we could get it there because I can do sales operations, but I can also do marketing. And I also am, you know, equipped to do sales enablement and growth and really think about it holistically from a revenue perspective. And so Aaron and Wayne, who's our chief revenue officer, uh, let me negotiate my responsibilities and um, very fortunate to, to be able to craft what the role would be. They definitely saw the, advantage of thinking holistically across sales marketing and customer success versus someone who was just going to focus on sales operations. And so now have you hired more people into the team it, like as we in growth ops roles? Awesome. And they like they may have come from a sales ops background, they may have come from like a product background or a marketing background. And you bring them all into this cross functional ops team. Yep. So I have, I have a couple people focused on commercial marketing. Uh, we do everything from generating awareness about our commercial product products to uh, customer lifecycle marketing to our existing customers. Uh, all focused on those on those KPIs around getting new customers, retaining customers, improving retention rates, adding value to our customers. Then I have our Salesforce administrator 
and a growth operations associate. So that's all of our process in Salesforce. I revamped our entire Salesforce instance. Uh, we we you know we track our leads, opportunities, pipelines, scheduled revenue, forecasting is now all in that system. And then the growth operations associate uh, runs our deal desk. So he does all of our pricing and quoting uh, for and packaging for all of our products as well as uh, special special projects, um, including ideation around new product development. So it does have a, a slight product spin to it. Maybe that's just because I'm the one that's <laughs> leading the function. Um, and then I also have new business sales reps um, who are working inbound leads. They're doing outbound prospecting. My team equips them with cadences in sales loft, scripts, qualification questions. So we really do enable them. And then not reporting directly to me, but reporting to our chief revenue officer, we have an account management function and the customer success function. So again, my team is involved in helping to prioritize the time of those teams against specific campaigns. Over the past few weeks, we've spoken to a hundred sales leaders around the world to understand the impact of COVID-19 on revenue. And we've combined these insights into one single report that covers the immediate impact, the commercial outlook, the tech stack that you need, and actionable advice for sales leaders. You can claim this whole report completely for free if you go to ebster.com forward slash COVID. That's ebster.com forward slash COVID. The, the next question, you mentioned sales loft. Could you just quickly detail the rest of the tech stack for, just for the benefit of the audience? Sure. So just to give you a little bit of background on that, when I first started at business.com, we had way too many tools and no clear use case on when to use what. So actually, literally my very first project when I got here was to revamp and reimagine the, the tech stack. So I hired a professional Salesforce administrator as the first step at that to revamp the the instance. I then consolidated our contact management. We had several contact management platforms that I consolidated. I chose Zoom Info. Um, So we worked with Zoom Info on our contacts. Um, I redid the contract process is actually an internal tool. Um, So I redid the contract process in that internal tool with our product team. And then I made the case to implement Sales Loft, uh, which I think is an interesting story in itself because we got to do a trial and um, Krista, one of our reps, doubled her activities. And so that was how I was able to sell the, you know, the added investment of having that tool is look at these productivity gains. Um, so, you know, implemented sales left. I, we have everybody in sales left. They work in it every day. They would be extremely sad if it went away. Um, so those were the first things I really took care of. The basics, I guess you'd say, you know, uh, how are we tracking things for the sales team? Where are we getting prospecting customer insights? How are we sending contracts? And then, you know, how are we engaging with people in sales loft? And then once I got that foundation down, a a few months later, uh, started looking at tools for customer success and for marketing. And we implemented Service Cloud this past year in Q2 for customer care. Um, And now in Q4, we're going to be implementing Pardot for marketing. So it's certainly a never ending journey of finding mm. the best tools for the team. But for, for your listeners, I'd say, you know, make sure you have the basics down before you add on to it. Sure. Now, do you see combining these different functions into a cross-functional ops team as a trend that we're going to see more of in the future? I do. I, I see more and more people with a revenue operations title or a growth operations title. I see because sales operations people have such a unique and valuable skill set where you understand process and how to get from A to Z. You understand people and people's different goals and needs. Um, and then you know, just being able to apply 
that work with data, that work with process across functions um, is super valuable. So I've, I've definitely seen it more and more. And the skill set, it makes sense to apply it across functions. The other trend I'm seeing, which supports this, is a focus more and more on the customer. And I think this is certainly something a lot of companies were doing and you know, have been doing since the beginning, but especially since the pandemic, focusing on customer retention, customer metrics is coming up more and more in the groups that I'm in. And um, so using some of that sales ops brain power on solving, you know, how do we improve the experience for customers? How do we make customer retention better? What are the most important customer KPIs is super valuable. If you're happy to share, what are the core metrics that you and your team are targeted towards? Sure. It depends on the quarter, actually. So I actually go through a process. I don't know if you've read the book, The Four Disciplines of Execution. I haven't, but I should. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll link that below for anybody interested. Yes. Yeah. So what that goes through is basically um, there's a whirl, whirlwind all around you every day with various you know incoming requests and things coming in. And to really focus, you need to pick key metrics and drive towards what they call the wildly important goal. So I had my team, you know, not read the whole book, but like read enough of enough sections of it. I think the first chapter so that they would understand the concept. And then we pick our metrics based on what's the most important thing that quarter. Um, so this quarter we are more sales focused. So we're, we're broken down into new business. We have two types of, products, our sales qualified lead product and our growth products. So we have new business by product. We also have new business by team. We have that new business team and we have those account managers that can also um, sign managed accounts. And then we have expansion revenue by product. Um, and that's really, we really trimmed down for Q4 because we're really focused on sales this quarter. So it might not be completely representative of the types of things we've done in the past, but it is new business metrics by product, expansion by product. Um, in the past, we've done things like saves for customer care, how many customers have saved. Uh, we've done things um, like initiatives around getting our chief revenue officer on customer calls and how many times you know we've gotten him on the phone. So it's very much initiative-based and based on what the organization needs that quarter. Sure. And so you're, I assume you're sitting down with other leaders to set those uh, at the start of each quarter. Yep. So like in Q3, we had, we had goals for acquisition. We had a goal around onboarding that, you know, X percent of customers would achieve a certain milestone during onboarding. Um, we had goals around retention. So, uh, you know, different campaign renewal rates and saves for customers over a certain dollar amount. Um, we rolled out some customer success programs. So tracking that, we, we did a customer survey in Q3, which was a key initiative tracking progress against that. Um, so again, it, it kind of, it just depends on, on the initiatives and the focus for the quarter. Awesome. And now let's wrap up the discussion with a very important question. Who within the world of growth slash rev ops would you love to take for lunch? It could be someone you know or don't know. I actually, so I enjoy spending time with my CEO, Doug Llewellyn. Um, we've had lunch a couple of times and He's obviously, a, you know, he's an operator and he's running the entire company now, but he did, he did have a background in marketing. He's worked at several different media companies and I think he always has intelligent questions to ask and an intelligent viewpoint. Um, so I also think that Doug's done a really good job creating an inclusive culture, uh, which is really important and also really hard to do to the point where... You know, at, at our company, he'll pause and he'll ask for input. He asks for people's ideas. If somebody's not talking, we make sure we hear everybody. Uh, so I would definitely want to go to lunch with Doug. 
Shout out to Doug. Well, Rachel, that was, it was an eye-opening view into a, actually the first growth ops leader we've had on the show. We've had probably about 40% rev ops leaders, the rest sales ops, and now we have the first growth ops. I also want to thank you for being so transparent about metrics, your processes, your tech stack. So it's going to be an incredibly valuable interview. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks again.